All right, everybody, welcome back to another piece of training. In today's training, I'm talking about an idea that I wanna share with you that has really served our clients and our community. You know, it's surprising to me um, how many, how, how long it took me to realize that this is why I was stuck at, you know, below five or $10,000 a month, you know, why I was even stuck at zero. And if this is you right now, I really need you to listen to this, or even if you feel like you're plateaued currently, whether it's that you're at zero and you're trying to get to 100,000 a year, or you've been stuck at 100,000, you'd like to get to 500 or even a million, you know, this is really a perfect module on how to recognize and break plateaus uh, using what I call the bottleneck principle. And really, not just break plateaus, but recognize the areas where you aren't showing up in the way that is necessary uh, in relationship to your goals. And sometimes it's not that we don't know it's not, sometimes it's not that we aren't working hard, but it's just that we don't know what to work hard on. And I'm going to show you exactly how to know what you need to do next in your coaching business. And, you know, this first intro section, it's been a lot about how to think and prepping you for this process. And I have to be honest with you and say that at this stage in my business where, you know, my my business will do on a bad month, it'll do a hundred thousand dollars in a month. And, and on a good month, it'll be anywhere from 200 to $250,000. And, you know, we're steadily growing. And at this stage, I don't think that much about strategy. I, I think more about these things. And some people would say it's a chicken and egg situation where, because I'm here now, I get to think about these things, but I would argue that it's inverse that because I've thought about how to think, and I've really taken the time to dig into my own psychology and understand, you know, where I'm lacking and what I need to change and, and what really, you know, I should be doing next. Um, because I've done those things, I've, I've arrived where I am today. So let's talk about it. It's going to be a really good module. So in this module, I'm going to kind of be pretty bold and say that I'm going to give you what I consider to be, you know, the secret to achieving any specific goal so long as you're committed to it. Um, and that final part is really important. You have to actually be committed to the process, but I'm going to show you how to take your goals and break them into little chunks and identify all the little pieces that need collected. And we're not doing this preemptively, meaning, you know, we're not looking two, three years out and thinking, hmm, what should I know by then? We're talking what comes next right now and how to know what comes next every single day, because it's, you know, it's one of the sad realities of the human condition that you know, our brains are so fickle, our memory is so fickle, and it's hard to stay on track. And, you know, our lives are so busy if we let them get there, and it's so easy to get distracted. And, you know, when all we really want, if we're honest with ourselves as entrepreneurs, is to know that we will be rich and wealthy, and we will have impact, and we'll have freedom, and that's all we really want. And if we can keep our eyes on that and follow this secret I'm going to share with you and commit to that process, then you can you can achieve it. So the next point I'm making in this module is, you know, really helping you avoid one of the biggest mistakes beginners seem to make in this business model. You know, we have data from over 500 clients and then some of them are also business coaches, right? So we see their clients too. And so we've seen, or not even business, but even fitness coaches or relationship coaches, you know, this, these secrets apply to all industries and all arenas and, and especially business, but we've just seen, you know, what what is going on in the mind of a client or a student who doesn't get results of the program and that's what this intro module has really been about and you know here soon I'm going to talk about specifics and softwares and strategies and everything like that but right now you have to trust me that this is the most important material you're going to go through okay because if you don't think correctly then you won't get the results that this program has promised you all right so next is I'm actually going to tell a story of a few major failures. So, you know, some people only see the highlights, right? Whether it's on my YouTube or Instagram or wherever it is you're seeing, you know, made my first, you know, million dollars by the time I was 21 and, you know, built this big company and all these successes. But the reality is I've had some major failures and they're simply because I avoided the bottleneck principle. You know, when I really look at every single one of my failures, it's because... I didn't do what I'm about to teach you in this module. So this is going to be a very powerful module, you know, because I've had some major failures. I've lost, you know, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars because of failed projects. And that's just not that's not just money spent on the projects, but that's the time that I spent on them that I could have spent on things that were, you know, 
ROI positive for my time that I didn't know at the time because I wasn't thinking the way I'm about to show you how to think. And then the final sort of thing that we're going to go over is the scientific process to identify what matters and what doesn't and building a life and business around those things. So, you know, we're going to talk about something called signal versus noise. So this is something that I learned, you know, one from one of my early mentors. And he told me, you know, life is noisy. Business is noisy. And it's our job as, you know, high achievers, as high performers, as people that desire more out of life and out of business to recognize the actions, the ways of thinking, the habits, um, and you know the places to be and the business models to be in and everything that, that we get more yield for our input from. And having a scientific process to identify these things is extremely important if you want to get a high return on your time and even your money. Um, and so I'm gonna show you kind of the difference between signal and noise. You know, signal meaning, you know, I'm getting feedback, I'm putting something out and I'm getting something back and it's actually, it's resonating and it's working. Whereas noise is just, you know, I'm just make I'm just clanging drums and there's no beat and it's just loud. And that's what a lot of people are right now. You know, a lot of people, I was sitting down at dinner recently with a friend and, you know, his wife, um, you know, is now launching a coaching business and she's having a really, really hard time getting it off the ground. And I looked at her Instagram, I looked at everything that she was doing and it's like, you know, she's posting and posting and posting and she's got a huge following and everything. It's just like, but nobody's buying. And, you know, I told her about this concept and, you know, within only a week, you know, her, everything's converting. She's realizing, wait a second, you know, I had a lot of noise, but I didn't have any signal. And so I'm going to talk about this with you. You know, it's, it's easy in the 21st century to be noisy. It's really not that difficult, you know, not that everybody can achieve it. There's, you have to understand the algorithms and everything. Um, and I mean, if you just learn the algorithms then you can achieve it, so really everybody can achieve it. Um, but it's more important to have a message that works, right? To have a sales process that works, you know, an offer that works. And these, these things are noise or these things are signal. Sorry. Other things are noise like, you know, brand new business models and flashy, shiny objects and whatever. And I, I fall prey to these things too, you know, and, and I want to prevent you from doing it because, you know, if, if I had just listened to this advice and I'd have had this advice, you know, four years ago, when I was first starting, then today I'd be in a completely different place, okay? So this is gonna be a really valuable module and I want you to watch the whole thing front to back. So we're gonna get into this and I'm gonna start by sharing the bottleneck principle. So I'm actually gonna tell you, you know, what the bottleneck principle is and you know, I've got this hourglass here because it kind of represents, you know, the sand only falls at the rate at which the, you know, the thin middle of the hourglass allows the sand to fall and in the same way, your business is only going to grow at the rate of its tightest bottleneck, at the rate of its tightest neck, you know, and I'm going to explain this here in a moment. This might not make sense right now, but I want to help you understand this principle in full and then learn to recognize what your current bottlenecks are so you can solve them. And if you're understanding what I'm saying and, and you're an entrepreneur right now and you've had a little bit of success, you understand the power of the words I'm telling you, you know, I'm going to show you how to permanently recognize bottlenecks forever. So a bottleneck is a flaw in your business system that prevents forward movement and forward movement in this case i would define as and it's important to define it as you know a steady whether it's quick or slow a steady forward progress towards a given goal like you know right now my goal is to grow my business to 10 million dollars a year and i am acutely aware at all times of all of the things that need to change and grow in my business there's probably a list of like 200 things that need to change right now and, you know, they're on paper somewhere or they're on a, you know, a task board or they're in my head, but there's a massive list, right, of little things that, you know, need my input and need my team's input. And so here's a simplified example. If you know that your best sales calls come from a YouTube channel, then the number of views is the current bottleneck in your business because we understand the magic three. We understand that, you know, sales calls is one of those magic three along with client delivery and uh, you know, um, generating sales calls, conducting sales calls, and client delivery are the, are the magic, magic three, right? And if you if you skip that previous module, you don't know what I'm talking about, and you shouldn't be on this module. You have to go back and watch that first module because otherwise, a lot of what I'm going to say today isn't going to make sense, okay? So, or you know, an example could be if you're closing 20 to 30 percent of your sales calls, but you're spending five hours a day on entertainment, like video games or whatever. The obvious bottleneck is time spent on calls, so that's the obvious bottleneck. 
If you want to grow, you have to spend more time doing what works, right? And so here's kind of just a little bit of a explanation of this bottleneck principle idea because I said the word bottleneck on a call recently with some of our clients in this program and I was surprised to hear how many people didn't know what that meant and like the analogy behind it. So a bottleneck is representative of the physical neck of a bottle. Like right now you can probably hear, you know, this is like a plastic water bottle I've got on my desk right now. And that was the sound of the plastic. So I have it right here and I sip this while I make these recordings. And you know, this bottle, I'll just, I'll just read off the screen. If this water bottle were full of water, which mine is, it would only pour at the rate that the physical neck of the bottle permits it to because the water has nowhere to go but out that neck, right? In the same way, you know, your business has nowhere to grow but through the current bottlenecks that are presented to it. In the same way, your business only moves as fast or grows at the rate of your current largest bottleneck. And, you know, it's important to solve the biggest ones first. You don't start with the little ones, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but a lot of people, they start solving bottlenecks that don't need solved right now, um, and it just doesn't serve them to do so. They have to solve what's immediately next, and we'll talk about this. So many of our clients fall to the prey of solving problems that simply don't exist, or, you know, granted, might exist in the future, but they don't exist right now. And after weeks, months, and years of doing so, you'll find that you've achieved nothing. Because though you might have an amazing course or back-end delivery system or get cl great client resources, you have no clients. And it's, you know, you might be in the situation right now coming into this program where you've built a whole thing, you've built a course, you've built a coaching program, and I'm, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. If you don't have clients right now that have gone through it, that have succeeded with it, you've taken a total shot in the dark and you have no idea if what you've taken the time to build is actually what you need to build. And you have to get comfortable with the idea of building it from scratch all over again. You might not have to, but you might have to. So think about that. You need sales. You need attention and client results for this business to work. And so someone ignoring the bottleneck principle does things like this. So they might spend, you know, 20 to 30 days building a, you know, a granted, it's, it could be a gorgeous website, but they still, again, it's not generating leads for their business. It's not, you know, creating inquiries for their coaching. It's not doing, it's not scheduling sales calls. It just kind of sits there, you know? And it doesn't really do anything. It looks great and it feels like productive work, but it's not what needs to get done. You know, you have to remember, you have to ask yourself, every time you're doing a piece of work, and this is worth noting down, you know, am I inventing busy work to avoid the important? Because the important is sometimes really painful. It's not always painful. You know, I really enjoy coaching calls with my clients. I really enjoy helping them solve problems. It's a passion of mine. I enjoy being on a group call with, you know, especially, you know, some of these mastermind clients that are getting to these seven figure levels, right? And I'm just, I'm sitting there helping them build their teams and, you know, build their upsells and build their whole business from ground up. And it's just very cool to me. It's very fun. And I could do it all day, right? Unfortunately, I don't because, you know, I've got other things to do, but I enjoy that. And so, you know, some sometimes you'll really enjoy the work, but sometimes you won't. And it's really easy to just listen to your emotions and think, hmm, maybe if I don't enjoy that work, maybe it's not what I need to do. When that's just not true at all, and you're not following the magic three, you're not following the linear process we teach you in this program, you know, you're not following the blueprint that I gave you in the last module, right? Another thing is like, they could build client resources like custom software, a whole course and deliverables without even, you know, knowing if that's what their clients need. And I'm about to show you, you know, I did this, I wasted. I think it was like seven months and I made three grand on the program once it finally launched. And I'll show you this in a second, right? And it's funny because it's very similar to the program I have today. It's just way, this is way better and way more impactful and significantly better content and, and better results and everything. Because, you know, I went back to the front and I created more demand, right? So I built my audience up. I made more sales, created better client results, more authority and everything. And I created more demand because, you know, I knew all of these things in theory but I hadn't really practiced them in the real world or for my clients yet. And so now I've done that and I've rebuilt it. And you'll see here in a second, kind of a version of that. I launched a program that helped people, you know, build their personal brand online. And it was just a disaster. The program looked great and everything, but you'll see that in a second. So another is like you build an entire course without proof that it will convert like a pre-sale or anything like that. Like you don't even have any verbal yeses that people would even want this. And yet you're going out of your way to build it, right? Another one is like you spend time on theory, going back through old courses or books. You know, you focus on the things that would otherwise be an advantage if they had momentum. Like people will focus, and what I mean by this is like they will focus on things like biohacking or they'll focus on like investing their money right now or anything like that, right? If if you had momentum, right? Honestly, you know, these, these health hacks, 
they work really well once you know exactly what you need to do in your business and you've got momentum and you need that extra five, 10 or 15% advantage, right? And you wanna stack those advantages. But right now, if you're just getting started, like you need to be willing to drop everything and make this work and create extreme misbalance for a season to get this off the ground. And so, you know, these are some of the things that people ignoring the bottleneck principle do. Like, it's crazy to me. You know, people will say, Trey, like, I've hit the gym every day for 90 days and my business isn't growing. What's up? I'm like, dude, that would relate to your business if you had a business that was off the ground and you needed better energy to run it with and everything. But that's not going to directly grow your business. Another one is like, you know, I cut, I cut caffeine, I cut soda, all these things. You know, these the pieces of advice that I give because it's given me advantages and I'm not perfect at these things. But when I do these things well, it, it's crazy how quickly my life moves forward and how quickly I grow, right? Um, anyway, they'll focus on problems that don't exist, right? And these are some examples of solving problems that don't exist right now. All that matters is the magic three. That's all that matters. That's it. Literally nothing else matters, okay? And so this was me. So this is actually, you know, my program. It was called Impact Income. You know, you can see I had 20 members in, in the Facebook group here. And I'm kind of ashamed to say, like, almost, I think over 10 of them, I let them in for free because I just, it wasn't selling at all. And I was so ashamed of that. And I didn't know why. And it's because I'd gone way too far down my funnel and built an incredible product without thinking about the top of my funnel. I didn't, you know, my audience didn't want this from me. And I didn't even really have that big of an audience. So this is, I launched this in like 2018. So, or 2019 maybe. I think it was 2019. Um, and it just didn't work. <laughs> you know, I, I made, I think three grand and I spent upwards of six months, you know, kind of building it out and putting it all together. And it's just, it was dumb. And now granted, I had to learn this lesson. You know, I had to sit here in my failure and in my pain. And I believe that, you know, our failures are just as powerful as, for us as our successes. We just need to sit in that failure and sit in that feeling and, and learn the lesson that it has for us. You know, I was talking to one of my clients recently, and this is worth really noting down and remembering because it's been an important thing for me to grow. It's, it's that, you know, you will stay at your current plateau until you learn the lesson that that plateau has for you, and then you'll move forward. And so in your business right now, you are where you are right now because there's a lesson you need to learn that you haven't learned yet. So you need to humble yourself and figure out what that lesson is. And that's really what the bottleneck principle is right? So, you know, why didn't this work? Why didn't this program work for me? You know, I built this whole program. I, I built a, a great course portal. At least I thought it was great. You know, I, I spent, gosh, it had like 20 hours of content in it. And I just, I poured my life and soul into this thing and it didn't work at all. So why didn't it work? And it's because I forgot the magic three. All that matters is creating demand. So generating sales calls, conducting sales calls. So converting that demand into sales and then improving client results. So improving the quality of your products and you know making your clients really happy they paid you money. You want them to look at the amount of money they paid you and just and then look at the results they've gotten in their life and their business and they look at your program and it's just unquestionable that this is what they should have done, right? So smart entrepreneurs work top down. And I'm about to explain this here in a second. I'm about to explain the scientific method, you know, of uncovering bottlenecks. And they have clear goals and timelines and are obsessed with solving the next problem in the chain of problems that arrives them at their goal. And I'm about to show you how to do this. I'm about to show you how to look at every area of your business and then create, you know, recognize those problems and then create solutions to them permanently, infinitely onto the future forever until you reach your highest goals. So let's get into it. This is, you know, the scientific method of uncovering bottlenecks. So let me share this before I get into it. The same scientific method that Edison used to invent the light bulb or that Wozniak used to create some of the earliest user-friendly computers is the same scientific method we will use to identify the tasks that work, that don't work, and then double down indefinitely on the activities that do and rid our lives and businesses of the activities that don't. So, you know, we've got, and I'll scroll back up, we've got the magic three. These are the three activities that you can bank, you can take these to the bank, you can bet on them. This, these will do everything for you. 
marketing, creating demand for sales calls, you know, building our brand online, putting out content, sharing client results from our program, partnering with other influencers in the space and promoting the program, you know, running some advertising to get some leads and then calling the leads and, you know, getting them on calls, whatever it is to generate those calls, whatever you can do, you, know, you got to get hungry and relentless about, about this part, creating demand, then conducting them, you know, following our sales training, hopping on these calls, you know, presenting a, a, a killer offer, you know, understanding your buyer's psychology and speaking to it and, and not just convincing them to work with you, but getting them to realize that it's the perfect and best option for them. And then improving client results, you know, digging into, you know, your clients that aren't succeeding and asking the hard question, like, what am I doing wrong? Why aren't, why isn't it working? And taking full responsibility for that and, you know, looking at your clients that have succeeded and saying, what puzzle piece did I, did I give them that they needed that got them to, to that success? What piece of advice did they really take to heart that maybe that my clients that didn't succeed, you know, they didn't take it to heart and asking these questions and digging in. Those are the three activities that matter. And I'm about to show you how, with a scientific method, I'm gonna give you a little visual here in just a moment. And it's powerful. You know, if you, if you really understand what I'm giving you here, you're, you're gonna understand that I'm giving you the key to achieving really anything you want, but particularly in your business. It's just that why some people don't use this method is because their ego gets in the way. They don't like being wrong. They don't like feeling wrong. They don't like feeling behind. They don't like feeling useless or like they've wasted all this time in the wrong direction. I know that's me. I, I, I hate that feeling of feeling like I've wasted time, right? And I'm going to show you how I use this, this scientific method to, you know, create, you know, monumentous growth in my life and in my business. So here's the visual. Here's the visual. So we're taking daily action every single day. We do the activities that matter. And then we look at the weekly and monthly sort of overviews, and you can look at yearly, whatever you want to look at, right? And then we kind of gather data. So we look at all of the results we've gotten. We take a peek at, you know, all the movement we've made, and we kind of gather that data. We, we, we note it, and we, we take a look, and we say, hmm, like, this did that, right? But then in, in that process, naturally, you're going to look at all the things you've done. You're going to look at the results of the things you've done, and you're going to notice a constraint. You know, you're going to notice that, you know, you've put – 100 hours in and you've gotten a thousand units of reward back in whatever that might be right and this could even be you have to understand this is powerful enough to affect all areas of your life and in that it is more powerful for your business you know, i believe that our world is run off of the same principles and rules it's not just business ideas that make you succeed in business you know our world fundamentally works off of some core you know pillars and, and principles that you can apply in any direction and, and achieve whatever you want and that's the real power of, you know, some of the things I'm sharing with you, right? These are things that have helped me even, like, find my dream woman, right? So, like, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not going to get into detail. You know, scientific method. <laughs> so, daily action, weekly, monthly overview, looking at the results of the things that you've done. Gather data unemotionally. Just look at all the results of the inputs you've made, all the actions you've decided, right? Then realize that the constraint that come with, you know, what you've done so far. So, you're like, hmm, you know, I've, I've put 100 units of input in and I've got 1,000 units of reward back. I'd really like to be able to put 50 units of input in and get 2,000 reward back. So, you know, that's a constraint. I, I'm not satisfied with where I am because I have a specific goal of what I want my reward to be. I have a specific idea in mind of how much I want my inputs to be worth. So then we're going to create a hypothesis. We're going to sit down and we're going to look like, okay, here's an idea as to how I could probably, you know, achieve you know, instead of 100 units being 1,000 units, you know, making 50 units, 2,000 units. So 50 in, 2,000 out versus 100 in, 1,000 out. So we're literally, what was that, the quadrupling our reward and having our efforts, right? So we, then we test the hypothesis. So we, look, we make a hypothesis and we test the hypothesis and then we ask, is the problem solved? So have I gone from, you know, 100 units in, 1,000 out to 50 units in, 2,000 out? Yes, okay. Then we zoom back out to the top, calling that problem officially solved, and then we zoom back in and we, and we continue with our daily action, right? And then we look for the next constraint. So here's an example of this, right? So uh, we're just kind of going into more detail, really. I'll share a specific example in a sec. So we start with, you know, noticing an area that doesn't align with our 12-month revenue goal. So, you know, earlier on, I had you write out a 12-month revenue goal. And I had you sit down and decide, you know, what you are going to try and achieve over the next 12 months specifically and getting very specific about it and then you know 
you start to notice a constraint. So you realize a constraint, so you refer back to the consulting blueprint program and the group calls. You know, you refer to other entrepreneurs. You look at, hmm, like, what have I forgotten? Or what am I not doing right? Or, you know, what's a little secret or a change that I could make to get more reward for the daily action I'm taking here? And then, you know, you create a hypothesis. So you create a theory regarding what might be broken, and then you plan, create a plan to fix it. And then you test your hypothesis. So you take action regarding the new theory. So you actually, you know, take action. You do what you said you were going to do, and then you observe the change. And if the problem isn't solved, you know, you just create a new hypothesis, you test it. If the problem isn't solved, you create a new hypothesis and you test it, and you just continue creating new hypothesis until you've solved the problem. So here's an example for me right now, right? So, you know, I've noticed that my clients, though they're succeeding, and people will look at the success that I'm getting from my clients in this program, and, you know, they'll say it's world class. They'll say this is incredible, right? And they've never seen something like this before, and I'm, I love that, but it's just not the level that I desire. Like, it's great, but it's not industry changing. I want to really create something that just blows everything out of the water, right? I want to be untouchable. And then, you know, I realize my constraints, so I listen to my top clients. I refer back to their interviews. I see what my top clients do and what my bottom clients don't, and I ask the hard questions. And I just, I get honest with myself. Like, what do I need to improve on? And what areas am I not showing up? And, and how, you know, what have I taught to my top clients that maybe I neglect to teach to my bottom ones? Do I have some sort of bias? Is there an issue with my coaching? Is there an issue with the way I run my calls? Like, is my team not teaching the way I need them to teach? Is, is it my program? What is it, right? And so my hypothesis is if I rebuild the consulting blueprint with fresh training and I create a whole new program from scratch, from bottom up, which is what I'm doing right now, you're seeing this right now in front of you, you know, then, you know, I test the hypothesis by building a new product. You know, my goal is that I create a significantly better client experience, which leads to greater, you know, scale in my company. Because my goal right now is, you know, 10 million a year. So I've got a clear end goal and I'm moving along the process of doing it and I'm solving the specific problems I see along the way using this scientific method. So over and over again, every time I see a new constraint, I apply the scientific method and I recognize where it is that I need to improve. I improve it, I see if it works. If it doesn't work, I try again, create a new hypothesis, see if it works. If it doesn't work, I try again. Then that third or fourth or fifth attempt might work. If that works, then I zoom back out and I look for the next problem. It's just that over and over and over again. And I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse into how I think so that you can start to think the same way, right? This is, it's this simple. So I wanna show you, you know, how using a clear goal, uh, the scientific method, repetition, iteration, and an extreme commitment, you can achieve pretty much anything you want, right? And I'm gonna give you an example real quick with, you know, Edison and the light bulb. And so, you know, in our business, we've got a few pillars, a few main variables like marketing, sales, delivery, you know, when he was trying to build the light bulb, there was a few things he was considering. And I'm not, you know, I, I didn't do a, you know, whole ton of research into this. I'm just assuming that these are some of the things he was thinking about, right? And so you can see how this applies in many directions. So he had a clear goal. So he was on top of his business or his business, his, on top of his invention. So his eyes up there looking down at the entire thing, observing it in its entirety. So he'll zoom out and say, hmm, what's my clear goal? Okay, so I want controllable light. So I want a light source that I can turn on and off. And, you know, I want to have light without having to, you know, have a flame. I don't want to have to light a candle because, you know, that's not really that controllable. And also it's it's kind of dangerous and whatever. So I want controllable light, right? So the first thing he looks at is encasing. And you can see on the bottom left here, he's using the scientific method. So he's going through the process of creating encasing. And as he's creating the encasing, he's he's got a clear goal for the encasing. So he's got an overarching goal, and then for each pillar of the light bulb, he's got a specific goal as well. So within encasing, you have, a, this should be strong enough to be a vacuum, but light enough to be transported, and it should be see-through, because obviously if it's not see-through, then you're not gonna get the light, right? Then the next thing is the fuse. So he's going along the process of building the fuse. As he's reaching you know, constraints, he applies the scientific method with the clear end goal of it should last at least a month, cheap material, and doesn't melt the encasing, right? Then power usage. He's going along the process of building, you know, its power usage, how much power it uses, and every time we reach a constraint, he, you know, uses a scientific method, and then, you know, applies the scientific method. If it works, then great, and his, his end goal there is he wants to be as cheap on energy as possible. And then manufacturing, so he wants to make sure that it can manufacture itself. So he wants to know that this is a product that can scale. Because, you know, Edison was an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of people don't realize he was, you know, he had, he had hundreds of employees working for him, and he was an entrepreneur. And so, you know, he wanted it to be easy to replicate, 
and produce at large scale through industrial factories. That was its end goal, is that could you know be easy to replicate. So as he's thinking about the manufacturing, he's thinking about you know how can I make this something that can be easily blueprinted and copied and replicatable. And as he's going through the process of making it replicatable, he's using the scientific method to make it more and more replicatable, right? So as he reaches constraints, he uses the scientific method to remove those constraints. And so let's just use the example in our business for a second, right? Let's say our goal is twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month, which you know a lot of people in this program this probably represents you. Some people are going to aim significantly higher. Some people look at twenty and thirty thousand dollars a month, and it feels just mind blowing to them. You know, we're going to talk about that later in, in you know the mental reprogramming modules. We're going to talk about how you view money, right? Uh, but for now, you know, just look at that twenty, thirty thousand a month number and kind of replace it with your number. And you know, like we did earlier, we did that calculator exercise. Just get a calculator out and you know, just think about this for a sec, right? So these are the three pillars really that I, that I teach, right? These are the you know, we scroll up to you know the magic three calls, you know, sale, generating sales calls, conducting sales calls, improving client results. These are the same exact three that I'm showing here: marketing, sales, and delivery. So, you know, marketing. We're going through the process of putting out content, being active in groups, messaging people, you know, uh, whatever it is that we're doing. You can get creative here. Obviously, we have our own methods. We have our own strategies that we're going to teach you, but you can get creative as well. You know, one of our clients right now, uh, she runs a blog, so she actually doesn't follow any of our teaching. She has her own source of traffic. She just runs a blog, but she had the goal of getting to at least one sales call a day, and so we showed her how to use a scientific method, right, and she has people just Googling her you know, and finding her blog. And then we just looked at, we created a new hypothesis. We said, hmm, maybe if we put, you know, a button on the side of your blog that says book a call 45 minutes with myself. Let's see how that does. And that got us to like one call every two days or so. So like, what if we put, you know, some images of people, you know, around that button that, you know, encourage people to book like, hey, check out Lindsay who, you know, joined our program and this is what happened. And then I think we did that and then that doubled the calls. And then we said, you know what, what if instead of a button to book a call, because that's really easy to ignore, because it's a big ask. What if instead of a button to book a call, we put a button there that sends people to a separate page entirely, and this is on every blog post, where then it has a 10 minute video explaining, you know, exactly what they would get if they were to join her program, and all the results that it's gotten so far, and to book a call, and that there's no obligation to buy if it's not a good fit. And if it is a good fit, that you have the choice to move forward, right? And then, and then we got that one call a day because we applied the scientific method, right? We looked at where she is now, which is pretty much one call a week because she didn't even really promote calls at all. We looked at her daily action, weekly, monthly overview, so we gathered data. Where is she right now? We realized the constraint. The first constraint was there's not enough sales calls, so we created a hypothesis. Hmm, what if we put a button there? Test hypothesis, problem solved? No, not quite. The button didn't quite work. Let's create a new hypothesis because the button kind of worked, but not all the way. So let's put some images there. Put the images there, that doubled it, but it's still not one a day. So let's try a whole new thing. Let's put a little, you know, a button that leads people to a training where it's 10 minutes and it's a quick training and then it encourages people to book a call after explaining the program a bit. And that worked, that got her to a call a day. So yes, that solved the problem. Then we zoom back out and we look at the whole business from the top again. So you see how powerful this mode of thinking is, right? Let's look at sales, you know, 20% close rate, right? You're hopping on these calls, you know, you're, you're asking the prospect the key questions that we're going to teach you. We're going to show you, you know, how to run these calls. And you notice, hmm, like, if you do the math, you're only closing 10%, which is still, you know, it's good because you're closing clients at all. But, like, you know that 20% is really important because 10 means you're working really hard for a sale and you're wasting a lot of time. So 20% is your goal. Let's say 20% close rate is your goal. Okay, we're going to zoom out. We're going to look at everything you're saying on a call. We're going to gather data about what you're doing, what you're not doing, and how the prospect responds. We're going to, you know, you know, realize the constraint, which is like, hmm, when we say this, they tend to turn away. We're going to create a hypothesis of how we could say it differently. We're going to test it on our next call, see if it works. Doesn't work. Okay, let's try to, it's, let's adjust the script a little bit. Try it a new way. Repeat, repeat, repeat until you find a new way to do it. And then you reach 20% close rate. Same with delivery, you know? Okay, we're noticing that, you know, 10% of clients, let's, no, let's say 30% of our clients end up wanting a refund, which is, you know, a huge problem. <laughs> I think we've had statistically about 0.7% of our clients ever want a refund, which is great. And that's even with our guarantee and everything, right? And so delivery is, you know, at least 90% of clients satisfied. Let's say you are at, you know, 20% of clients are dissatisfied. So only 80%. So you'd like to add 10% satisfaction levels. So you zoom out, you gather data, look at your action, look at what's happening right now. You, you know, you gather data, you realize the constraints, so you, you, you see that, hmm, 
you know what, it seems to be that people are skipping this part of the course and it's really important. Or, hmm, it seems that, you know, when I explain this idea to people, they don't really listen, they don't really understand it. So I'm gonna, you know, kind of create a hypothesis of how I can teach that differently, test it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, let's create a new idea on how we can teach it. So you see how it's really simple and yet people overcomplicate it so much. And you know, it's funny, a lot of people join our programs and then they expect to be told exactly what to do, but I'm telling you to learn how to think. I'm telling you to learn how to observe your business on your own so that at the end of this 12 months, you don't need me. I don't want you. Like, I like that people want to renew, don't get me wrong. I think it's really cool when the 12 months hits, people say, hey, Trey, you know what, I wanna stay in. It's like, cool, let's do it, let's keep you in. But to be honest with you, I'd rather you upgrade, you know, to our mastermind where I can really get you to that seven figure level or just not come back at all because I don't want you to need me. My goal is to make you self-sufficient and I'm really showing you how to think about your business here. So let's say your goal is 100,000 a month, right? You know, these are kind of the, this is kind of the math to 100,000 a month approximately, you know, three to six sales calls a day. So, you know, let's look at where we're getting our sales calls. Let's say you're getting it from YouTube, right? But you've only got 200 views a day and you're getting two sales calls. So to get six, you know, you need to get, you know, 600 sales calls or 600 sales calls, 600 views, right? So, hmm, let's, you know, zoom out, look at what we're doing currently on YouTube, take a look at the monthly results we're getting on YouTube, gather some data, then let's realize the constraint, right? Okay, it seems like we're not posting enough because our content's working, but we're not posting enough. So what if I hired an editor and then I, you know, devoted my Saturdays to content and then, you know, I ran that for two months and I saw if it works. If it works, no, okay, let's create a new hypothesis. Maybe the problem is, you know, cause now we've uploaded a lot, but the videos are getting less views and I don't know why. Maybe I should run a poll and, you know, see what people say they wanna hear from me and then make more of that content so they keep watching. And then that works. Okay, let's zoom back out. We've solved that problem, right? And now we're getting, you know, our six sales calls a day. You know, after about four or five months of testing, we're doing it. You, you know, I could go through each of these, right? You, each pillar of your business should have a specific goal and you should apply the scientific method to each arena. And I'm just giving you example after example after example. And, you know, people ask me how I coach so well. And, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything. It really is just that I can look at somebody's business from this perspective right here. I can see everything they're doing. I can realize the constraints quicker than they can because I've got the experience, right? And then I can give them hypotheses, hypotheses that work based on the previous experience that I've given my other clients. And I can tell them how and when to test it. And you know, with a certain level of accuracy, my hypothesis tends to be correct because of my previous experience. And then they take it, they run with it. And that's really what you're getting in this program, right? You're getting a sped up hypothesis. That's really what you've invested into. And so I hope I'm making sense and that you see the power in what I'm giving you right now. This isn't, you know, just a one-time thing. This is something you do for the rest of your business career. You approach every problem with a scientific lens and you apply the scientific method to that problem and you observe what worked and what didn't and you're objective. A failure isn't a failure, it's just data. A success isn't even really a success, it's just data. And you continue to move forward with a continually upgraded worldview and view of your business and, and a continually upgraded understanding because you're humble against the truth. So like I said earlier, you know, when I was first introducing this module to you, I said the main reason why people don't do this is their ego. So you have to get rid of that ego. You have to get rid of that sense of knowing it all. You don't, you simply don't. And I'm allowed to tell you that right now because you're not a prospect on a sales call and I don't have to be nice to you. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. And the reason you're in this program is because there's a lot for you to learn. And you have to accept that if you really want the results that you want, okay? So um, let me say this, here's why I share this. And this is just the truth. I mean, I've, I've seen this over and over and over again. It's so surprising to me how often I see people overcomplicating the next steps in their business because they don't have a mental model to approach what they need to do next. So, you know, people say they want to get to $100,000 a month, but they don't know what to do next in order to get there. Like, hmm, I could, you know, I, I think I'll try. They're, they're like a leaf in the wind. They're getting blown by every new marketer, every new idea. You know, this person's saying, oh, hire an appointment center. This person's saying, oh, get a closer. This person's saying, oh, you know, do Instagram shout outs. This person's saying, oh, run, run a webinar. This person's saying, you know, those are all like, none of those ideas are bad per se. But, you know, if you don't fundamentally believe that you are in, in control and that you can 
even if the solution is somebody's program, like you're in my program right now, you see it as a solution, so you're doing it. Even if it is, you need to know why it is and not just blindly make decisions from a surface level, right? Um, and this causes, you know, uncertainty, stagnancy, a lowered sense of self-resolve, and leads to both burnout as well as staying stuck at your current plateau for years. And some of you are hearing these words that I'm saying and you are shaken to the bone by them because this is you. You know, you've made unresolved decisions over and over and over again. You know, you're, you're kind of like, ah, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't, I don't know. You know, you, you're like, I, I guess maybe my niche is what I need to do, I don't know. I, is this the way I need to my sales calls? I, I don't know. As opposed to being humble, knowing you don't know what you don't know, and remembering the scientific method. So you must remember the scientific method, you know, what I call the perfect mental model, and develop a clear goal for the future to continue moving forward. So let's just kind of imagine real quick, you know, your marketing sales and delivery on, you know, the spectrum of the top left, the mid left and the bottom left there being zero. So zero in marketing means you literally have no, no, you've got nothing, no digital presence at all, nothing. Sales meaning zero meaning like you've probably never even sold anything in your life, right? Which was me four years ago. That was me. I'd never sold anything. And then delivery. So you're at an absolute zero, right? You're, even if you were to sell a client by chance, somebody decides, you know, they're going to pay you some money. Probably they wouldn't pay you that much. And even if they did, they would, you know, wonder why they did, right? And then we're, you know, consider these blue lines to represent a timeline between, you know, and it's an indescript timeline. It could be three months. It could be three years. It, it doesn't matter, you know, but this blue line represents a timeline between that left beginning and the right end. So I'm just using that $20,000 a month mark as, again, kind of that goal, right? So as we're moving through this process, we, we notice that we have a sales constraint here in the middle. You see that red line that just popped up. Okay, we've got a sales constraint. So, you know, we are closing, you know, only 5% of our calls. So that's a massive sales constraint. It's a huge problem. So, okay, we are trying to get to, you know, one call, one, one close every other day, let's say, right? We apply the scientific method to this problem until it's resolved. So then we solve it and then we move forward. And again, I'm really drilling this into your head because I want you to be able to zoom out and look at all these areas of your business. Because imagine how powerful it is for you if you know exactly what matters in your business, which is these magic three, and you're able to zoom out and look at each and say, hmm, this needs change. Hmm, this needs change. And just make these decisions. You know, we're going to give you some just high class advice and input on exactly what you need to do. But you know, if you don't know why you're doing it really from a deep core place and you're just blindly following, then you're not going to be really resolved on that. And it's not going to come from a place of certainty. So these are the only things that matter. And now you have a model for asking, you know, why one of these three things isn't working and you can move forward and begin to slowly chip away, guaranteed chip away, but maybe slowly at this process. You know, it's important to remember that, you know, Edison, I think there's the story of him trying you know, 10,000 different versions of the light bulb, but he had these variables, you know, using a clear goal, the scientific method, repetition, iteration, and extreme commitment. This is what he did. He had a clear goal. So he had a clear goal. He wanted controllable light. He, he used the scientific method. So in each of these four areas, or there's probably more areas for him to think about, you know, I'm sure there was, this is just my, you know, high, high, high level understanding of that process he went through. You know, he had clear goals for the overarching goal of what he, he was going for, um, which is controllable light, and then each of the individual areas, right? And then he used the scientific method to achieve each. So then with repetition, iteration, and an extreme commitment. So he re repeatedly made new versions of the light bulb. They failed, they broke. You know, I've heard stories of like, you know, explosions even. <laughs> you know, he iterated it, changed it up, and he had an extreme commitment to figuring it out. So to the level where he was, he just decided he had his internal resolve. He's not going to stop until he figures it out. It's that simple. He has a clear overarching goal. He's going to use the scientific method and he's just simply not going to stop until he figures it out. It's just that simple. And you have to have this level of commitment. And I would even add the word other than commitment, almost like a childlike curiosity towards the world and towards business of like, Hmm, you know, I'm just going to throw out my beliefs and just try something and just see if it works. You know, and if you don't have that childlike view of things and you're just going to be this almost stoic, you know, you're, you're going to be resolved. You're already going to be resolved. You're going to be resolved, but you're going to be resolved in the wrong direction. Your belief is going to be pointed in the wrong direction because you don't have just that, 
desire, that genuine desire to understand. You think you know it, but you just don't. And I'm here too. I know that there's all kinds of things I have to learn between now and 10 million a year. And I'm going to use this framework right here to do it. It's that simple. I'm going to do this every day, day after day, year after year, until I'm there. Unless something major gets in the way, like who knows what, this is just what I'm going to do, right? So I hope this makes sense. You reach your constraint, apply the scientific principle, move forward. Now it's solved. So I'm going back through editing this module. Actually, I'm not editing it. Our editor's editing it, but I figured I wanted to put this quick example of a relevant use case of the scientific method in my own business with a new marketing angle that we've been testing. And so let me show you what I mean. You know, we went from spending $4,000 and making nothing on this ad process to spending 4,000 and bringing back 5,000 to spending 4,000 and bringing back 20,000. And now we want to spend 10,000 and turn that into what would that be 40 or 50. So I want to show you, and I'm not going to tell you what the ad process is because I don't want to distract you with, with different marketing lingo. I don't want you to think that this ad process is the secret. Honestly, it's not the ad process, it's the scientific method in solving what was broken in the ad process that has been the secret. So let me explain kind of what this has looked like. Okay, so I know so far these modules have been very well built and very, they look great, the presentation is all built, but I just wanted to break away from that mold just for a second because I wanted to make a very crucial point. Understand this. So, you know, just like a second ago, I showed you, you know, sales, you look at zero to, you know, 20K a month and you just solve for the problems. Whoops, let me move myself down. You solve for the problems that show up. You use the scientific method to solve them. You know, I'm just going to, you know, basic version of the scientific method. Go back to your hypothesis, test it until you've, you know, gotten it to work. And then you go back into working on the process, right? So we did this in my company. We're doing it every single day. Like even with our program right now, we're rebuilding it and making it better and everything. But I just wanted to explain to you, look, very recently in my business, we've been looking at ways to allocate more capital to grow more because we're sitting on a stupid amount of capital and I just want to allocate it better. I want to spend money to make more money because right now it's just kind of sitting in the bank and I'm like, to be honest, I'm doing stupid things. Like I'm buying watches. Like today I bought like a $40,000 watch and that's all cool. And I love that I get to do that. Don't get me wrong. But it's almost like the bottleneck of growth in my business is I can't figure out how to allocate capital. So that was my first problem. So the problem A was, you know, capital or problem one is capital, which led to like, you know, should I just, where should I put it into marketing or into coaching or whatever, what should I do? So I decided I want to put it into marketing. So once I decided that I want to put it into marketing, which, you know, cause I have a problem, right? So I noticed a bottleneck in my own, in the growth of my business, which is I can't allocate capital. So I come up with a theory as to how I can fix it, which is marketing. So we'd start plus like testing a bunch of different marketing channels. We spent, you know, 40 grand in ads on, you know, YouTube. And that didn't really quite all the way work. We spent YouTube ads to a VSL funnel and we didn't quite get it to click. Granted, we could have applied the scientific process to it more, but at that point, we, I just wanted to cut my losses, right? And so the next stage was spending less money. So I said, okay, next time my budget's 10,000. You know, I wanna only spend 10 grand because I don't wanna spend more than 10 grand because I just don't wanna lose more than 10 grand right now. So you said, with $10,000, we wanna at least double our money. So the first month we spent four. And like I said, we turned it into zero. So we're in this process, right? Marketing, we're on a timeline. My goal is to have at least a 5X return. So this is my goal. So I've got an overarching goal that I'm trying to achieve and I'm trying to have a you know 5X return on at least, I'd like to have a 5X return on at least you know $20,000 a month, which would be a pretty solid, you know, that's turning you know $20,000 into $100,000. So 80,000 profit plus paying the team and their commission. So I'd, I'd personally put like 65 to $70,000 in the bank, you know, if, if, if we can get this to work. So I have this problem, I'm trying to solve it. So we started playing with different angles. So we played with Instagram swipe up ads, which is actually what ended up working. And again, I don't want you getting distracted with Instagram swipe up ads. They worked for me because I applied the scientific process. We played with YouTube, right? We played with even like rant, we played with LinkedIn. We, we played with cold, like we literally like paying a VA to do cold for us, all kinds of stuff, right? But Instagram started to work because honestly, I've already got a platform over there. So it was like less time spent building a new platform in a new direction. You could argue that that's the case with YouTube, but honestly, I just, you know, the problem with YouTube is it doesn't have a people element. So, you know, you can't message people on YouTube. So that was that. So we spent, you know, like I said, month one, M1, we spent 4,000, brought back zero. Month two, we spent 4,000 and we brought back 
uh, I think it was five. So we made literally one sale. Okay. Month three, we spent four thousand, and at this point, we'd almost reached my ten thousand dollar budget. But I had a very clear goal. I wanted five x return. So this is when I started to see. Oh wait, we could probably get a five x return. Each month, by the way, we're looking at why we got zero, and we're using the scientific method, and we're look, we're coming up with a theory as to how we can change it. So you know, month one, it was honestly an issue with my sales team. Like 100%, we didn't know how to close these leads because they were completely cold and it was a new sales cycle for us. Month two, you know, it was, um, you know, we were starting to get better at our sales process. We had theories as to how to change, how to get better. We repeated the process of iteration. I think we had like 10 calls from this approximately. Uh, we had about 10 from this as well, but we ended up closing one. So literally we're 20 calls deep, but we're just applying the scientific method and process. And then month three, I think, you know, we spent 4K and we brought back, I think it was like, it was it was seventeen thousand, I believe. We brought back because so we made a we made a twelve thousand dollar sale and then a five thousand dollar sale. Yes, and so seventeen thousand, and then month four, we spent. We're gonna spend this month. So so far we've spent five thousand, and we've brought back twenty. And so now you can start to see. Okay, we're approaching my goal. So I've got an overarching goal of I want a traffic method that is a five x return on my capital investment. That's what I want. It's the overarching goal. So I'm using the scientific method, coming up with a theory, testing it in the real world, and coming up with a hypothesis, testing it in the real world, repeating that process until I get back in. Month one, it was how do I get my sales guys to close these? Because I know that these are good leads, but like I don't have the time to hop on these calls because I'm coaching, I'm building the program, everything like that. So I'm not going to sit on these calls and do that, right? So what do I teach them? How do I help them? So we got on. So my theory was if I do an hour of you know one hour of sort of sales coaching with my team a week and I just sort of diagnose some of the things that are happening on these calls so that they start to close and that theory was made true because we made our first $5,000 sale and then once they made the first 5,000 they got the confidence so I said just watch back that $5,000 sale keep looking at it keep watching it and then it led to our 17 right and the 12,000 was actually a down payment for our mastermind right which is awesome um, month four 5,000 to 20,000 you know and this was this isn't even any mastermind sales this is all CB and so now we're approaching my goal of a 5x return. So hopefully this makes sense, right? We're just, we're literally just, I, I've got a clear arching goal, which is 5x return on my ad spend. So I want us to turn a buck into five on cold traffic consistently. That's what I want to do. And I know we can do it if we just use the scientific method to get there. And so we've learned as well as a sales team, like how to handle leads that come from YouTube versus leads that come from this process because they're a different type of lead. And so they've learned how to handle those calls differently. They don't close with the same attitude and perspective is maybe a lead that comes from one wood but we use the scientific process to uncover what worked and get it to work so i want to encourage you that if you're stuck in like what traffic channel should i use should I use youtube linkedin instagram whatever like we're going to teach you some great marketing methods in this program we're going to show you particularly youtube and instagram we love those platforms but if you have another platform you have another process you want to go down use the scientific method come at it like a rational human being and don't make it so emotional don't throw stuff in the wind and then assume it's not working because you're two months in and it's not working any movement forward is forward movement you just need to figure out why that forward movement happened reverse engineer it turn it into a theory test that theory see if you're right on why it worked and then you'll start to get anything to work okay so hopefully that makes sense